Welcome back to part 2. We are now ready to start building our login form. So, let's see how we do that. We are now going to add a new form to the container that we have created previously. So rather than creating this text here, what we are going to do is add a new form, add the email and password fields, and we are going to see how that looks like. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to create a new form. And this uh, takes a child. Um, for now, we're going to def decide that the child of our form is going to be a column. And the reason we want to do that is that we want to um, put our email, password, and login button one after the other vertically. So the column takes an array of children. Notice how previous components that we created were only specifying one child but because here we are creating a column is a different type of widget and this type of widget uh, takes more than one child so in our children array we want a new text form field and we're going to say that this text form film has a decoration um, parameter which is a new input decoration and this takes a label text where we are going to say email yeah then we are going to define a second text field for the password so we are going to say new text form field and in this case we are going to say decoration new input decoration and this time the label text is going to be password okay so if we save now, we can hot reload the application and see how this looks like. So we can see that we already have an email and password here. We can tap on them and we can even enter some text. Uh, one thing that I don't like so much already is that these fields uh, stretch all the way to the edges of our screen. So let's fix that by adding some padding to our container. So we do that is to say padding. And here we can say edge inset the all and for example we can say uh, 16 points so if we save and refresh we can see that the padding has now been updated okay so let's see we can now type our email and we could type in a password as well uh, one thing i notice here is that the password is not really obscured and this is not best practice on on mobile so let's fix that so the way we do that in the password field is to say obscure text true if we save and reload again we can now test this and see that the password has been obscured so we're good to go next step is to add a login button so let's do that we're going to create a new raised button and we're going to give it um, a child which is going to be our text. Uh, so this will say login. We're also giving a text style. So when you create a text object, you always have the ability to create a text style associated with it. And this is where you can find things such as the font size, for example. And for our case, we're gonna give it a font size of 20. Okay, let's refresh and see how this looks like. So we have now added this login button and we can see it, but um, it seems like it is currently disabled and I can't really tap on it. So the reason why it's disabled is that we haven't defined a callback handler for when the button is pressed. So let's try to add that. The way we do this is we're going to say that on pressed, we are going to call a new method inside our login page. So we're going to call this method validate and save now because this method is not defined the compiler complains about it so let's create this and we're going to say validate and save and we're going to add the implementation for this in a second if we save and reload now we see that the login button has become enabled another thing that i'm not too happy about is that this is really quite a small button and i would like it to stretch all the way to the left and to the right so that it aligns with the email and password fields that we have. So 
In order to do that, we need to add a new property to our column widget and we're going to say cross axis alignment and we're going to give it a cross axis alignment of stretch. So with this, we're going to see that the login button now takes the full width. And just for reference, cross axis alignment and a few different properties. If we were to say, for example, start, we would see that the login button would appear on the left. And if we were to say end, it would appear on the right. So this is how do you define the positioning of the elements uh, or widgets inside um, a column. Let's go back to what we want it to be. So we're going to say stretch. And the layout for our login form is now complete. The next thing we want to do is to actually start adding some validation code for our email and password fields. So let's see how we can do that. In order to add some validation logic, we are going to add a validator property to our text form field. And the way this is gonna work is that it gives us a value and we need to validate it. And we could do that by saying value, for example, dot is empty. And if the value is empty, we are going to say the email can't be empty. Uh, if the email is not empty, then nothing, no. Similarly, we are going to add a validator to our password field as well to say that when the password is empty, we need to inform the user that it needs to add one. So let's see how this might work. So if we type in our email and password, we can type in something here, we can tap login, but if the password is empty, well, nothing is happening here. Um, so what's the deal? The problem is that even though we have added a validator to our uh, login to our email and password fields, we are actually not running this validator. And the reason is that it is the form itself that we define here that is responsible for validating the status or the state of its children. So in order to do that, we need to add the code to trigger a validation of our form. So this validate and, and save method that I added here is the right place for it. Uh, however, how can I access the form uh, within here to tell it to validate? And the way that we do that is that we are going to define a new thing. This is a new concept. So we are going to say we are going to create a final form key, which is a new global key uh, of type, um, in this case, form state and we are going to say that when we create the form his key is form key now what this allows us to do is to go in the validate and, and save method and we can say that we get a form from the key by saying current state and what we can do with this is to say form well, validate, then here we could say print form is valid uh, or else here we could say print that the form is invalid. So let's see, we might have to um, refresh Actually, this is working. So we can now see that I typed in a dummy email and I left the password empty. Once I tapped on the login button, this red text showed up to inform me that I need to enter a password as well. And similarly, if I did leave the email empty, then this would also be um, highlighted in red. We can also see in the debugger down here that the print line that I put in has been has been included. So is definitely hitting the validate and save method, is getting a reference to the form via the form key that I defined. And, and here I can add my validation code. Okay, so now that we added validation to the form, the next thing that we need to do is to actually save our state, uh, which consists of the email and password. So if you remember, we've added this string email and password fields when we initially 
build this widget but we never hook them up so now is the right time to do this so how do we do that we go back to our email and password fields and we're gonna add a new on saved um, callback which also takes a value and what we're gonna do here is to say that the email is equal to value similarly in the password field we can say that the password is equal to our value so what we can do at this stage is now check uh, that the state is actually uh, being persisted so after the form is validated we could try to print um, the email and password for example here we could say email email and password we could also try to see if anything is printed when the form is invalid so we are gonna add a login here as well and if we save and reload we should now be able to enter something like test for example and I'm gonna put test as well for the password now if we head to the debug section here at the bottom we see that the email and password are no uh, which is not something we were expecting and the reason for that really is that we added a saved, an unsaved uh, callback to our buttons, but we forgot up here to call form.save. So, so let's do that quickly and verify that the change now works. So I got email and password saying test, and I can now see that it's actually saying email and test in our um, debugger. So by saving the form, what happens is that the onSave method for both the text form fields is being called and so we are now able to persist the state. Okay, so this looks great. So now that our login form is complete, we can actually use it to authenticate users to our app. And the next step is going to be to add authentication. So to do that, we are going to be using Google Firebase. And the first thing that we need to do is to add um, Firebase authentication as a dependency to our project. So the way we do that is we go on this file down here called pulsepec.yaml and what we want to do is uh, look at dependencies section of this file and we're going to add here a new dependency which is going to be called Firebase authentication and we also want to give it a version name so um, every time we install dependencies for our Flutter project it's always a good idea to go and, and find them in this Dart packages website so at pub.dartlang.org we can look for packages that we want to install in our apps and that will tell us always what is the latest version of them so in this case we want Firebase authentication and we can see that the latest version is 0.5.4 so this is the version that we are going to specify in our project so once we've done that if we save our pubspec file automatically our editor will install the package with the common flutter packages get you can see that here alright so that means that our flutter um, dependency is now installed and the next step is actually to be going to register uh, this application with Google Firebase so to do that we can head over to the Firebase uh, console here and we're gonna add a new project so we're going to call this login demo and we're going to create this new project it might take a little while and once this is created uh, we will then need to configure our app with the settings uh, that, are, that uh, will be given to us okay so it looks like our project is ready and we are taken to the dashboard for our project now uh, we want to add authentication to our specific app and before we can do that we need to follow the instructions here to add Firebase to our app and I will show you now how to do that for iOS so we're going to tap here and it asks us for a bundle ID uh, so how can we find that um, what we had to do is open our application uh, with Xcode 
uh, we can see that there. So if we run, if we open the app in Xcode, um, we can quickly find what the bundle ID is uh, from this page. So we're gonna tap on the runner uh, project here. And on this screen, we can actually see the bundle identifier. So we're going to copy this and we're gonna paste it into our iOS bundle ID here uh, for our app. And we are now ready to register it. So what this will do is it will generate a configuration file that we can then take and, and drag into our Xcode project. So let's do that. We're going to download this file. And we can now move it to our project. So we're going to take the file and we're gonna drag it into our project. Specifically, we want to add it to our iOS uh, runner folder. So we're just gonna move it here. And in Xcode, we now can add it to the project. So we're just gonna drag it quickly. And this way we ensure that the Google uh, service info file is bundled with our iOS app. And this contains all the information that uh, the app will need to communicate uh, with Firebase. Okay, so our setup is now done and we can go back to our IDE in Visual Studio and we can start adding the code to integrate Firebase within our app. Okay, so let's go back to our login page and here we're gonna add a new import for our Firebase auth dart file, which will let us use all the methods that are inside Firebase. Now we have previously written this method validate and save, which validates the form and saves the data into our email and password. So what I want to do now is create a new method called validate and submit. And I want to change quickly the return type of this validate and save method so that it will return true when we have managed to validate and save our email and password and return false otherwise. Next, I'm going to this new method and say if validate and save is true, then I now want to authenticate with Firebase. So, and I want also to remember to change uh, our my button callback to now be called validate and submit. So when this login button is pressed, we're going to call this validate and submit method, which in turn will save our form. Now there is one last thing that we have to do before we can log in with Firebase. And that is we actually need to enable signing in with signing in with email and password. So to do that, uh, we can dismiss this. And if we head on to the authentication page in our Firebase um, console, we can now see all the different providers that we can enable to use authentication with our app. So the one that we want to enable is this email and password. So we're gonna do that. We save it. And now it tells us that we can now sign in with uh, email and password. Next, we will complete the Firebase integration in our app and we will also add a registration form. So I will see you on the next video.